Hey everyone, it's Stacey. Thanks so much for joining me for my mystery block of the month. Today's block is actually a bonus block. We'll be doing two blocks in July and that's so we finish well in time for Christmas. We'll be finishing now at the end of October. So block eight is this really super easy and quick rail fence block. We'll be making it so super fast you won't believe it. You'll find all the instructions in the link in the description below. So let's get making our rail fence block. So to make our rail fence block, I've created this legend and you can find a copy over on my website. I'll put a link in the description below. Now we need to cut our fabrics. We've got A, B, C and D. And for each of those pieces, we need to cut one piece at three and a half inches by six and a half inches. And then for our E fabric, which is all the outer corners, we need to cut four pieces at three and a half inches by six and a half inches. So essentially they are all the same size. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just move this up and then I'm just gonna place the pieces so they match the image here. And if you have directional fabric, this is the point now where you just make sure they're facing the way you'd like them to face. Then we'll take our E fabric and put it next to each of the pieces. And you'll see that it doesn't quite fit. There's a little bit of extra fabric here. That's just because we haven't sewn them together yet, which takes half an inch up with our seams. So once you're happy, what we're going to do is we need to sew them along the center seam. So I'm just going to fold the e-fabric on top and then we will just pop a pin in so we know which side we want to sew on. I'm only saying that in case this is directional fabric and you needed to be careful of which way it's sewn together. So I'll fold this one down, pop a pin in. I'm just popping the pins in loosely now, but I will fix it up as we sew each piece. So now let's sew them together. So just with each of the pieces, I will take the pin out and I'm just going to make sure all the edges are lined up really nicely. So we want them to be lined up on the side, the top edge and this side here. And when we're happy, they're all lined up perfectly. I'll pop a pin in. You can use as many pins as you like. I'm just going to use one because I feel like that's secure for me. And now I'm going to sew them with a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm using my Aurifil thread, which is what I like to use when I'm quilting. And I'm stitching at stitch length two. I'm not going to worry about a back stitch and I'm just going to begin at the very edge here. And I've just stitched right off the edge. I'm just going to take the next piece and um, we're going to do chain piecing. It's just because this is a really simple block, it's really easy to do it that way. Again, I'm just going to line up all those edges. Once I'm happy, pop a pin back in, and then I'll just repeat this process until I've sewn all four pieces together. So just sewing off the edge of the last piece, trimming the threads and where they're joined. And now we're just going to press them. So for all four pieces, we're just going to set the stitches, which as the name suggests, helps set them and makes them stronger and set into the fabric as well as lay flatter. Then we're going to press towards the dark fabric. So I'm just going to open this up Make sure those seams are coming towards the dark. I'm going to give it a finger press. Make sure there's no creases in here. We want it to sit really nice and flat. And once I'm happy, I'll press. And I'll repeat that for all four pieces. Okay, now we're going to sew them all together. So using my legend as a guide again, I'm just going to lay them back out in the correct order. 
oops, I've already put that one wrong. We need to have my e-fabric on the outer edge there. There we go, and it's easy to tell because we're kind of creating this fan effect. Is it a fan or a pinwheel? You kind of get this piece going up and out and down and out again. So just check that they are sitting correctly and then what we're going to do is sew these two pieces together and these two pieces together. So I'm just going to fold that down on top, pop a pin in, just so I know that's the seam I want to sew. We can fix it up later. And the same for this piece. And now let's sew again. So just taking my first piece, I'm going to take that pin out and just line up the edges again. Remembering on the side, the top and the side. And just once I'm happy, I'll pop a pin in. I'm going to just use two this time because it's slightly bigger. You can use however many you'd like. And then I'm just going to sew along that seam, stitch off the edge and then do the second piece exactly the same way. Now I'm just doing the second piece and I've got the seam underneath that I'm going to be sewing over. I'm just going to turn that over so I can make sure it is getting sewn down in the position that I ironed it or pressed them in um, because we want our blocks to sit really nicely. Just going to trim the threads and then let's let's press again so for both pieces i'm just going to set the stitches and then i'm just going to press the seams towards this solid piece here so opening it up making sure those seams are coming up towards the solid piece giving it a finger press and pressing I'm repeating that for the second piece. Okay, let's sew them together. So now I've just laid them out again, just double checking with my image that they are in the correct order. And now we're going to sew them together along the seam here. So I'm just going to fold them on top of each other, grab it in the center here, and I've got two seams and we're going to nest them. So we've got one seam that comes along and around this way, and this seam on the left hand side comes around and back this way. So all we're going to do is line them up and push them up against each other so they can't go any further, which is why we refer to it as nesting the seams. And then I'm just going to open it up and just double check I'm getting a nice straight line there and I am. So once I'm happy, I'm going to pop a pin in. You could use one on either side. I'm just going to put one in here that's coming in from this side and ending up on the other side. And then I'm just going to come to the beginning edge here, line up those edges on this side and the top and pop a pin in and then at the other end as well. And then I'm just going to sew them together. So just sewing along that seam as we've done for all the other pieces. And when we're coming up to these seams, just making sure we are sewing them down in the same direction that we press them. And I can see that that bottom fabric's peeking out, it's not lined up perfectly, so don't be afraid to just stop and readjust as you're sewing. Okay, so just trimming our thread and now let's give our finished block a final press. So just setting our stitches again, opening it up and it doesn't matter which way the seams are going, just giving it a finger press and then pressing. 
and I'll just give the whole block a gentle press. And there we have it, our very simple rail fence block. So there we go, block number eight, the rail fence block, and I hope you agree it was a really nice, quick and simple block to make for our bonus block in July. Now, if you've been following along in the journey and you've made all the blocks, or perhaps you're new and just found me and plan to catch up, please just leave a comment and let me know how you're going, how you're finding it, and if you're enjoying it. I love to hear from you all. And if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe and hit the bell button so you get the notifications every time I do a new video. Thanks so much and I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching my videos. If you're enjoying them, please like, subscribe and leave a comment.